Hello, my name is Chris. I am the Jurassic Artist, and today I am showing you how I have repurposed the Kenner Series 1 Stegosaurus. Basically, what this is is just how I've tried to repair the damage to the box. There's a lot of wear and tear on it. Obviously, th some things need re replacing. That kind of thing. So, this is a little video, probably a bit boring, of how I did it. Let's go! So it obviously goes without saying, the first thing we do is open the box, a bit sacrilege I know, but it has to be done unfortunately. I don't think anything's going to uh, get better than the uh, 93 range from Kenner, it's absolutely beautiful, this is why these need to stay in the box. Don't get me wrong, I had these as a kid and they've been played with so much, I absolutely love them, but the artwork is always stunning with the sunset. It's up to you what you want to do here, you can either just pull it apart as long as you're careful, I've just gone for the knife just to make sure the cut's good enough because the glue obviously it's 30 years old now it's doing its job so it's, i've cut it just to make it that little bit easier obviously i'm i think i just uh, ripped the last bit now the damage to the inside doesn't really matter it's not going to be seen my plan was to leave the boxes as they were as, as in they don't need updating So the first thing I like to do is to get rid of the PVC window. It's not in the worst condition this, it's a bit uh, dirty and mainly faded so it's got, can't really see it on here but it's got a little bit of a browny yellow kind of tinge to it, this is why I want to replace it. Also it's quite thin is that PVC so what I replace it with is just a regular uh, piece of PVC. A little bit thicker and what I do I just basically cut it roughly to the shape I'm not bothered about it matching around the uh, logos or the sunset or the uh, silhouette sorry Mod Podge is what I use thanks to Nathy Vader for giving me uh, Steve on that a couple of years ago Yep, so basically just dab it all the way around, or just fast forward it. I don't want it right to the edge. If it goes right to the edge, you'll end up with it kind of coming over the sides. This way, it just uh, sticks a little bit further away from it. And I'm also not going to push it down too much. I mean, it is inevitable that the glue is going to come down. I think I do catch it onto the uh, backing paper. And then what I'm doing here is I'm just covering it and then I'm going to put something heavy on top. Obviously it's got to be Jurassic World related, or Park for that matter. But this is the uh, visual history, so I'll just leave that on top. A few moments later. A few moments later. It's pretty much dry, I mean you can see there it's not 100% but it does what we need to do. As long as it's not going anywhere, that's the main thing. So basically the next thing I do is I take cardboard, it's pretty much just cereal boxes. Again, it doesn't matter what you do here, I've literally covered it so the uh, kind of colourful outside bit of the boxes are stuck to the inner bit of the box. You just see the grey so it doesn't change it, but you're never going to see this, it's all going to be covered. But yeah, basically what I've done is I've Cut all the bits down to the right size, roughly putting them in place before I start to glue them down. Basically this is just going to reinforce the outside of the box. I don't know if you saw it at the beginning of the uh, video, it was bowing a little bit. But again, just a little bit of Mod Podge everywhere, don't go overboard, it doesn't really matter. Like I say, as long as it's holding the internal structure, it doesn't need to be doused in, uh, in glue. Just 
put it roughly into place as long as there's an overhang. And then I'll just fast forward it again, just to give you an idea, you don't need to be doing it for five or ten minutes. Unfortunately for me, my uh, special plates there from Asda weren't quite big enough to cover the inside bit, but it doesn't really matter, like I say, it's just to protect it, and it also reinforces the plastic as well, so I've also done the top bit, which is just off camera, so that every uh, bit is covered there. And I'm just going to close these down, make sure it's nice and flat. Obviously, I'm going to use Sam Neill's book which was signed thank you to the stock on instagram for sending that over because it was only available in australia i'm also using the polio society's jurassic park and lost world which are illustrated by vector that fox awesome tomorrow done so it's reinforced Ta-da. so now it's basically Colouring in, advanced colouring in. I won't say adult because that sounds like something different. First, I'm just taking off some of these cello tape and stickers. Cello tape, no other way to do it other than slowly take it off. This one wasn't coming off great near the actual image of the Stegosaurus, so I thought it was better just to cut it and leave it rather than try and damage because to try and repair the damage on the photorealistic image a lot harder than just on the silhouette bit so I'd rather have a little bit of sellotape than rip it on the actual stegosaurus and I'm just wiping the uh, kind of excess stickiness down from it very very damp sorry not very damp cloth and then I'm going over the sticker that was just above it doing the same thing not damp at all slowly wiping it until it wipes it away but being very careful not to wipe too much of the actual box itself and there's some sellotape on the other side that I'll take off as well and now it's a colouring I use a uh, Windsor and Newton Pro markers. You can use paint, it's just I haven't really got them, so I don't, don't really want to be doing it with paint myself. Obviously, black paint won't be too bad. I've, you know, I've used kind of modeling paint for the kind of miniatures that you see, like Warhammer, Star Wars, tabletop games, that sort of thing. But I'm used to using uh, Pro markers myself, so that's what I'm sticking with. So it's simply just a case of coloring in the uh, worn white bits making sure everything's uh, black for the uh, shadows it does make a difference it doesn't look like it, it is a slow process you can see here more it obviously uh, fixes it a lot more Obviously with the black as well, there's a lot to do, so I didn't want my big head getting in the way too much. So fast forward we go, it's all the same thing, it's literally just colouring in the warm bits, any kind of tear damage, anything like that. Anything that stands out on the black, which is generally a white background of the card or greyish background. Obviously now as I kind of open up the crease, you can still see some of the uh, white underneath it. So it's going over it again, this time with it folded in its correct position. Otherwise, uh, some of the wear and tear will be on show. And do that for all uh, edges. So 
so next up is the red color obviously i've got a few reds i'm going for the uh, one that matches it the best and again doing exactly the same thing i'm just going over the, the white bit but what i'm doing this time because um, it's obviously a glossy finish and the red might not be quite the perfect match i'm essentially just wiping off the excess so it pretty much just colors the kind of ungloss card the wear and tear of the card um, and then doesn't stay in the actual gloss so it, any kind of differentiation in colour can't be seen as well since I've wiped it off so that's the reason why I'm kind of wiping it down at the same time obviously the top of the box is a lot easier to do because it's just the red gradient for the first kind of what, fifth of the box down until it starts to go into the orange and then the yellow top and back of the box as well so red as well so red's easier for us to do the yellow and the oranges are a lot harder to kind of match but I'll get to that later and again I'll just fast forward it it's a long process it's pretty boring to watch I'll admit that to give you an idea of what I'm doing. And then again, I'm just going over some of the damage on the bends. And then I'm just trying my best to do the same thing with the orange. This is, doesn't match as well. I was a bit disappointed how this one kind of ended up. But it's not the worst. It's, it's better than white, as far as I'm concerned. But... This is one reason why paint might be a little bit easier to, to use. And again, there wasn't really any yellow damage apart from some of the lettering. And now I've just gone back to the red, just touching up some of the damage on the uh, electrical artwork on the back. And then I've gone sandstone just for the kind of dirt colour. I just wanted something that was of a more generic colour because there wasn't much damage, just a little bit. And again, imagine it's kind of like a, a paint wash, it's just literally going over it. it it's not a photorealistic thing, it's just to kind of fill in the gaps, just so it doesn't stand out as much. And then there wasn't any damage to the inside. The Stegosaurus is in place. Obviously, it's missing its card. But the cellar tape on the inside had come off very slightly. So I'm literally just lining it up there. I'm not even pressing down hard just so it keeps its shape. I'm doing the same with the uh, other three corners. Just on this one, on the inside, it had a bit of cellar tape. So again, I didn't want to pull it off. I literally just wanted to snip at it so it comes off because that bit you won't really see with the with the kind of box in front of it I mean I have redesigned some other ones in the past I've redesigned the whole junior t-rex uh, in a box but on you didn't need to do anything on this occasion and now we're back onto the Mod Podge it's literally just putting a line of glue along the bottom I mean, this isn't the easiest bit to do because the size of it. Once you put the glue on, you'll see that I kind of struggle a little bit um, to put it on. Mod Podge is a good glue to use because it doesn't really leave a gloss finish. But it's also quite slow to, um, to actually take. It's not quite as instant as obviously like super glue or modeling glue. So you kind of just got to leave it in situ, which is what I've had to do here. But obviously the corner piece that connects to the bottom doesn't stay perfectly at 90, deg 90 degrees so I just use a little bit of sellotape just to keep it in, into position and then I'm just pushing it down completely and then you'll see that I kind of push the box down with it making sure it doesn't lose its position and then just to kind of protect it in a moment put a bit of paper on the inside just to protect the PVC because obviously if glue was to come out land on that could just, just 
damage it a little bit. And then it's just another case of putting something heavy on it and letting it dry. So we've stood by, we've done it, we've got everything sorted in terms of repurposing the strength of it, um, doing the uh, PVC window and obviously updating uh, the colour, getting rid of the, the warm bits. So now it's literally just putting it back together. So what I've done, I've, I'm putting it back kind of with sellotape. It's obviously not the tape they've used originally because that's more of an industrial tape, very thin. Um, I could put the card in, um, the collector's card, but for what I want it for, um, it's just to go in my collection. I've, I do have the card, but that's another collection. So yeah, just fast forward it there just to get the stegosaurus in. Close the box again. It might be a little bit snug because obviously we've added to the thickness of the card, so it might feel like you're going to kind of force it as you're putting it in but that's just like I say because the inner card has just made it that bit thicker but as you can see it's done let's take a look at it overall I'm very happy with how this has turned out I feel like um, the box is looking in good condition you can see there that not all the uh, colour blends in, but it, it's not bad overall. Like I said earlier in the video, the orange and yellow is a harder bit to do than the actual red at the top. Obviously I'm missing the cards inside, but that doesn't matter for me. I'm pleased with it. Let's see what it looks like with the rest of the Kenner collection. Thank you so much for watching the video. My name is Chris K. I am the Jurassic Artist on Instagram, YouTube, and Etsy. And in the meantime, please like, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Thank you. Uh, goodbye.